Hi everyone, today I'm gonna to talk about Bitcoin, crypto, and taxes. So up this upcoming tax season, what you need to know, how crypto is taxed, and all the different nuances of airdrops to forks, to DeFi, to NFTs. Um, just you know, before we get into it, wanted to have a disclaimer that I am not a tax professional, that uh, you should talk to a, a professional before you do any of these sort of things, before you make any financial decisions. I simply took some blog posts and wrote this up. So this is more of kind of an informal guide Again, go talk to a professional before you dig in. Um, and before I go into the main topic, I want to give a shout out to one of my sponsors, Ledin. Ledin is the best place to earn a yield on your Bitcoin or borrow against Bitcoin using it as collateral. So if you if you don't want to sell your Bitcoin, but you want to borrow enough to put a down payment on a house, you can do that with Ledin. Okay, let's go ahead and jump on in. So, you know, naturally with my background as a libertarian, I'm not a huge fan of taxes in general. But as Bitcoin became mainstream, uh, various regulatory agencies in the 2013 era started to opine as to like what, how Bitcoin should be regulated, taxes being one of those. And the IRS came out with tax guidance in 2014, and this is what that notice looks like. So if you want to read it, you can go ahead and look for the uh, notice 2014-21 uh, notice from the IRS. And so it, classif it, it, it uh, clarified that Bitcoin is a virtual currency and that should be taxed as property, not as, a, not as a money or anything else. Um, also early in the crypto eras, you know, my dad's a tax CPA, so him and I talked a lot about these various issues that I'm about to cover and the kind of thought process from a CPA perspective. Again, I'm not giving tax advice, I'm just walking through some things that I've observed. Um, and also one of my friends, Jake Benson, started the first crypto tax company called Luca. Uh, back in 2014, and so this is uh, this is the announcement about starting that company back then. I was also one of the advisors, um, and I was working at a product at Blockchain.com back then. Note that this the when I go through the taxes here that this is U.S. only. It would take me an eternity to write about every single geo, um, and then make sure you pay attention or skip to the part about tax loss harvesting. This is the biggest piece of information that you need to know in the next 24 hours, because if you want to take advantage to harvest losses on your, your crypto, you need to do it before the 31st of December. Okay, cool. So like I said before, crypto is taxed as property. Um, now there's a whole lot of different weird edge cases here that I'm going to cover uh, in the space. And <laughs> only in crypto do we have all these weird things, right? So forks. So the IRS considers forks a dividend. Um, and essentially, so that's, you kind of pick that up as, as income. Um, airdrops, same sort of thing. Now, this is what gets a little bit scary because, and then here's, um, you know, here's the uh, blog post from Taxbit on, uh, and Taxbit's a sponsor of mine, by the way, this is their blog post on the phantom consequences of uh, airdrops. So airdrops are kind of scary because the IRS said that when you, you're taxed at the fair market value as an income, whenever you have control over the airdrop. So if you have a self-custodied wallet, you could be taxed on the original value that was airdropped to you, regardless of when you access the wallet, regardless of when you sold it. So that's like a pretty scary thing. Um, DeFi, <laughs> there's gonna be tons of CPAs this year that cry out in agony when they have to reconcile DeFi activity. Um, all this sort of, there, there's so many nuances here, here that I can't get into all the different edge cases, but you know, when you lend out your crypto and you earn a yield, that's considered income. You know, if you receive incentive tokens for providing liquidity, that's considered income. And then transfers of tokens into a liquidity pool, that probably trigger, triggered a taxable gain or loss. So DeFi is a lot of fun and, and really permissionless. You know, you can go do whatever you want, but just hope that, you know, different, <laughs> if you're not doing, to, to calculate this will take like an army <laughs> this year. It's gonna be, it's gonna be pretty crazy especially if you had lots of different transactions. Um, the uh, IRS has not issued specific guidance, but they assume that you're looking at existing guidance and applying that to this. So, um, you know, when in doubt, consult a tax professional. NFTs are capital assets, just like digital currencies. Um, when you buy or sell them, you incur taxable gains or losses. And um, what's tricky though is it's probable that the IRS is going to consider it and classify these as collectibles. Um, and the unfortunate thing is that collectibles are subject to a 28% long-term capital gains rate, no matter what income level you're at. So that's, that really kind of sucks because 
Um, you know, if you're lower income, you have much lower long-term capital gains, but for collectibles, they're taxed flat rate at that. Um, now, of course, it only is applied when you you hold it past one year, which is long-term. Um, but if you hold it in less, less than one year, it'll be short-term capital gains. Mining, when you mine Bitcoin and you earn it or any other crypto, that's that's income. And then after you receive it and then sell it, whatever gain or loss between that is also applicable. Um, staking, while the IRS has not given specific guidance on staking yet, it's likely to be taxed as income. Now, that's really kind of a shitty scenario because a lot of these, a lot of the yield that you see with staking tokens is inflation yield. So essentially, they're debasing the currency and providing you a yield via inflation. And so you're essentially eroding your stack of coins or your purchasing power while incurring infl- and while being taxed, you know, and taxed at income. So um, there, it's theorized that the IRS may give a carve out for staking where they consider it a creation of new property since it's um, essentially printing new units rather than like throwing off a, a, a real return in a way. Maybe, um, but I also think that's somewhat unlikely. Um, but I, I think that uh, this is something that's going to be figured out by the IRS over the next the next couple of years or so. And so regardless of any activity that you did, you know, forks, airdrops, buying and selling an asset, there's a couple of different things you need to know. One is tracking your cost basis. The other is tax rates. And finally, law, tax loss harvesting. So tracking your cost basis. So your cost basis is essentially original cost when you bought the asset. And so let's say you've got a couple assets, like you've got three Bitcoin or four shares of Uber. Well, you need, you need to track the exact units that you sold. And it's typically better to, dispo- it's, it's better to dispose of the assets that have a higher cost basis because that reduces, you know, if you, that cost is higher, that reduces the amount of income you have to pay. And prior to the IRS's 2019 guidance, um, there was some ambiguity around which cost basis methods were allowed. And here's the couple that you could choose from. First in, first out, last in, first out, highest cost, lowest cost, average cost, and specific identification. The IRS's new rules as of 2019, they allow for only two cost basis methods, first in, first out, or specific identification. And so um, first in, first out is essentially the first unit that you bought is the first one that you sell. So if you bought a Bitcoin first in 2014 and you sold one now, you would sell from that 2014 era. Specific identification is much more granular, but requires a little bit more precision in your tracking. Specific identification identifies exact lots or AKA units of your coin and selects which one to sell. And so that one is essentially kind of a HIFO methodology where you could select the highest cost ones at all times. Um, that way you, you make sure that you're incurring the least amount of gains. Um, tax rate wise, the United States distinguishes between long-term and short-term capital gains. Short-term capital gains, if you hold a, a crypto asset less than a year, that's going to be short-term capital gains, and that's included to your income and taxed at ordinary income tax rate. Long-term capital gains, um, it depends on what year we're talking about. Long-term capital gains range change. Same with income tax rates, and depends on what income level you are. So, you know, uh, let's see, let me pull this up real quick. So you'll want to look this up if you Google like Nerd Wallet and oops, sorry, you Google Nerd Wallet and Google the capital gains rates. It'll show you what your taxes are based on how much income you make and if you're married or not. And then losses. So, you know, we're talking about gains this whole time. Sometimes you have losses. Um, your losses deduct against your gains. But if your losses exceed your gains, then you can deduct it from your income up to $3,000 in losses per year. That's not a ton of money, but that amount gets rolled over into the next year and offsets future gains. So, you know, what, what kind of sucks though is if you have really big losses um, and, you know, if you have really big losses, but you have high income too, you know, you're not, you're only able to offset 3K worth of income and not, not all those short-term cap gains. Or you're only, you're only able to offset 3K of income, but not like apply the full capital losses to that. Before we begin, I want to give a shout out to Choice, one of my sponsors. As most of you know, when you hodl, you don't have to pay taxes. But what if I told you that you could hodl and when you eventually sell your Bitcoin, you wouldn't have to pay any taxes then? Well, I didn't think that was possible until I found Choice IRA. Choice is the best retirement account to set up for Bitcoiners that lets you buy and hold Bitcoin in stocks without paying a dime to the government. And how does that work? Choice is an IRA. 
They have IRAs and Roth IRAs, which means it's a special type of retirement account where you don't pay taxes if you hodl until a certain age, along with some other stipulations. And the best part, you can self-custody your Bitcoin with Choice, which means that you don't have to trust Choice or anyone else with your Bitcoin or your private keys. It's the perfect retirement solution for Bitcoiners. The best time to start stacking sats was 11 years ago. The second best time is today. Search stack sats in the app store or choiceapp.io slash held. Link is included in the description below. Go get, check it out right now. Okay, so let's get into tax loss harvesting. This is the most important section that you should be paying attention to. This is where you're going to make the most money. So it's an investment strategy that maximizes after-tax returns by taking advantage of dips in cryptocurrency market prices. So essentially, you're getting a like tax refund, if you will, um, or you're harvesting losses. So here's how it works. Let's say you want to hodl long term because you've bought. Let's say you want to hodl long term, but you've bought higher than the price is now. You can sell that Bitcoin to realize the loss and immediately buy it back. You'll have the exact same amount of Bitcoin, but now you have the losses to offset gains. This is technically called wash trading. And a common question is whether there is any risk of the wash sale rules applying to crypto. At this time, wash sale rules specifically apply only to stocks and securities, not crypto. This technique may not last for forever. If the infrastructure bill is passed, it may uh, reduce or close this loophole. So, you know, TBD on if this lasts, um, we'll, we'll see here. Um, right now, the infrastructure bill looks like it's not going to pass, but that could happen later. And by the way, the this would be retroactive as of the date the bill was introduced. So how are you possibly going to pay your taxes? How are you possibly going to calculate all this? You've got all these different events going on. You've got all these all the cost basis tracking. It's going to be a nightmare, right? And there's tons of software products out there. None of them are perfect. It's basically impossible to do this in a perfect way without some manual intervention. I personally believe, after checking out all these tools, that TaxBit is the solution that fits the bill. I love the product. I love the team. I actually met the CEO, Austin Woodward, at a conference booth in 2018 when he was first starting. So I remember these guys when they were young, when they were just getting started. And as of a few months ago, they hit unicorn status, a $1 billion valuation. So really proud of these guys. It's been awesome to see them grow and really crush it here. So they just raised a monster round to go build the best accounting tool in the space. Uh, they also have partnered with PayPal, Gemini, BlockFi, OKCoin, CoinList, etc. So they're one of the top tools out there. Here's a little sneak peek of what uh, sneak peek of what the product looks like. By the way, the product is live and looks exactly like this. So this isn't a future product. This is what it looks like today. So really clean, really simple, easy to use, a really great tool for you. Um, and in January, they're going to be able to they're launching functionality to reconcile DeFi and NFT transactions. So if that's something you've been trading in, they should be able to cover most of those trades. Um, if you haven't signed up for the tool yet or looking for a new one, I definitely recommend that you check them out. They've hooked up my newsletter subs and the watchers of this YouTube video with a promo code DHELD, which you can use for 25% off your service. There's a link below. Check that out. So click that link, go sign up, and then enter DHELD into the promo code space. Um, portfolio management. This is kind of the last component I want to touch on here. It's a massive pain to connect all these exchange account, wallet addresses, CSV exports, et cetera. But there's a silver lining to all of this. If you're an active trader or participant in the ecosystem, it's really tricky to track all your performance or P&L profit and loss. With TaxBit now, you have the central dashboard where you can monitor everything going on in your crypto portfolio. So this is a huge advantage where you don't necessarily just do this once during tax time. You could come back and check out this dashboard every single day. In conclusion, you guys know me. I'm Dan Held. I love hodling. Hodling reduces all your sweat and all the anxiety around figuring out taxes during this <laughs> during tax season because if you hodl, you don't have any taxable event. So definitely recommend that. Uh, you know, personally, I like hodling. I think that's the way to go. Um, but yeah, if you hodl, you don't have to mess with any of this. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, throw me a like, throw me a subscribe. It helps get this video out to more people. Everyone needs to know this stuff before tax season. I know it's not the most exciting topic, topic in the world, but I hope you enjoyed it. Cheers. Bye.